in a move that has to be seen as one of the most drastic shifts from the Democratic Party in recent memory, a number of 2020 Democratic hopefuls are not attending this year's APAC conference, which of course is the American Israel Public Affairs Committee. Now, I'm going to break down exactly who is not appearing, uh, including one candidate here that hasn't appeared in the past and has already been a leader in this uh, in this area. But before I get there, I want to um, break down here some of the reasons why there were progressive groups like MoveOn.org encouraging 2020 candidates not to appear at this APAC conference. So here's what uh, MoveOn tweeted out. Number one, APAC spent tens of millions of dollars in 2015 to defeat the Iran nuclear deal negotiated by President Obama along with international allies. It was a historic diplomatic agreement that Trump has tried to derail since taking office. Number two, APAC has been known to peddle anti-Muslim and anti-Arab rhetoric while giving platforms to those involved in human rights abuses. Number three, APAC conference is headlined by Benjamin Netanyahu, under whose leadership Israel may have committed war crimes. Number four, APAC has refused to con uh, condemn the anti-Semitism of Republicans, such as Trump's friend and advisor, Steve Bannon. So all of these reasons and more, and including uh, politicians like Ilhan Omar that have recently raised the issue of the Israel lobby in Washington and the power that this lobby holds over politicians on both sides of the aisle. So I think a combination of these progressive groups like MoveOn.org and politicians like Ilhan Omar raising the issue have moved these uh, 2020 Democratic candidates to think more carefully about attending APAC. Now, let me break down exactly who's listening and who is not showing up to APAC. So first up, Pete Buttigieg will not be attending this year's APAC conference, according to a spokesperson for his campaign. So just a couple words here on Pete Buttigieg. This is a candidate that I haven't paid too much attention to, but when I do hear from him, I do like what I hear. So I think this is a candidate that uh, people should be uh, more aware of. And hopefully in the future, I will do uh, more videos to cover him. Now, um, who else is not showing up at APAC? So here we go. New Kamala Harris not going to APAC. An aide confirms to Politico. Now, this was surprising to me. Surprising because Kamala Harris has showed up in the past to APAC. So in 2017, you can see her uh, here giving a speech at the uh, APAC conference. So more recently, though, I mean, to her credit, she has been shifting a little bit to uh, the left on this issue and becoming more aware of uh, Israel's potential war crimes and how the uh, Israeli government has been treating uh, Palestinian people. So she does appear to be... Uh, evolving on this issue, but her history on this, uh, for the most part, has not been great. Next up, just learned Warren is not going to APAC conference in, in any capacity. Good for her. The other 2020 Dems should be held to the same standard, and if they go off the record to schmooze with donors, journalists should report that and ask them what they said. So, this is an important point here. Uh, First of all, Warren not going is also a huge move, and I'm going to get into uh, her evolution on this issue as well. But good point here from uh, Peter Beinhardt talking about how even if some of these candidates may not be going in an official capacity, there is a potential that they're still showing up to schmooze with donors and uh, other potential you know, big money supporters there. So journalists, as Beinhardt points out, should report that if any of these candidates may not be giving a speech, but do in fact still show up. So <clears throat> let me just show you a little bit of how a, a Warren has evolved on this issue. So back in 2014, Warren uh, spoke on Israel Gaza and was sounding like Netanyahu. So there was a time when Elizabeth Warren was incredibly pro right wing Israeli government. But since then, she has changed her tune a little bit. So in 2018, as most Democrats stay silent, Warren calls on Israel to exercise restraint against Palestinian protesters. Now, it is kind of a low bar to ask for the right-wing Israeli government to not be murdering unarmed protesters uh, in Gaza. But at the same time, it is more than what most politicians in Washington were willing to do. So clearly, Warren has evolved on this issue. Now, someone else that I find surprising uh, that they aren't showing up to, to APAC is 
Julian Castro. So former HUD Secretary Julian Castro's campaign confirms he will not be attending APAC either. Now, this surprises me. Julian Castro has largely been seen as a uh, moderate Democrat in Washington. As far as I've seen, he has not been uh, strong on his uh, language against the right-wing Israeli government. So this is an evolution for him as well. But he also has barely been talked about for 2020, especially in progressive circles. I don't think he's anybody's first, second, third, fourth, or fifth choice. So I'm not sure if this moves the needle on that at all. But... It does potentially signify that the Democratic Party as a whole may be moving in this direction for the future. Now, um, of course, Bernie Sanders is also not showing up. So uh, here's this, uh, this tweet that went out. Bernie Sanders will not attend APAC conference, policy director Josh Horton tells CNN. Senator Sanders has no plans to attend the APAC conference. He's concerned about the platform APAC is providing for leaders who have expressed bigotry and oppose a two-state solution. So, out of all these candidates, Bernie has been the most consistent on this issue, just like most other issues. So, uh, in 2016, he was actually going to deliver a speech remotely to APAC, but APAC turned him down after learning about the speech. So, let me read a little bit more about this. What Sanders said on Israel in APAC's speech that he was not allowed to deliver. Not one to shy away from criticism of Israel, he stressed that in order to be successful, quote, we have also got to be a friend not only to Israel, but to the Palestinian people, where in Gaza, unemployment today is 44%, and we have there a poverty rate which is almost as high. Peace has to mean security for every Israeli from violence and terrorism, Sanders stated but it would also require the end of the Israeli occupation and pulling back settlements in the West Bank. It is absurd for elements within the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu government to suggest that building more settlements in the West Bank is the appropriate response to the most recent violence, Sanders said. It is also not acceptable that the Netanyahu government decided to withhold hundreds of millions of shekels in tax revenue from the Palestinians, which it is supposed to collect on their behalf. But by the same token, it is unacceptable for President Abbas, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas, to call for the abrogation of the Oslo Agreement when the goal should be ending the violence. So essentially, Bernie had an entire speech where he was criticizing not just the, uh, the Israeli government, which of course he did, but also the Palestinian leaders. And still, he was not allowed to give the speech remotely, even though he had been invited to give a speech. So... This shows you that, look, if you're not willing to take the criticism, then these politicians are just going to begin not showing up. And what's going to end up happening? APAC is going to be the one that is left out. And they're going to be the ones that continue to lose their power. So this is a fantastic move by these Democratic uh, 2020 hopefuls. And I hope this sort of thinking and this perspective continues to take over the Democratic Party and informs real foreign policy.